Welcome along fellow time travelers and fans of the Beatles. In this micro lesson we're going to travel back in time to check out 251 Men Love Avenue in Liverpool. So let's get rolling. 251 Men Love Avenue is the childhood home of John Lennon. It is located in the Woolton suburb of Liverpool. Built in 1933, the semi-detached property is nicknamed Mendips after the Mendip Hills. The Mendip Hills is a range of limestone hills to the south of Bristol and Bath in Somerset, England. The house was built by a firm of builders who built many of the houses in the local area, which were all similarly styled and were given names in order to attract middle-class buyers. The original owners of the house vacated it during World War II and they never returned. So, Mimi and George Smith were able to take possession and they moved in. Now let's talk about what we see when we look at the house. Mendips is a classic example of a typical 1930s middle-class semi-detached house. It is two stories in height and it has a rough cast render exterior. The front of the house faces southwest. And if you look to the top, the house has a hip roof with red roof coverings. The house has two bays. From the street, you can see that there are leaded casement windows that incorporate geometric, floral, Art Nouveau style stained glass designs. There is an enclosed, flat roofed, and partly glazed porch on the left side of the ground floor. And the porch was enclosed in 1953 by John Lennon's aunt, Mimi Smith. The house has a four panel front door with a glazed upper light that contains a leaded and stained glass design in the same style as the rest of the house. And above the front door, there is a slender overlight. And looking up above the porch on the top floor of the house can be seen a canted six light Oriel window. Now that was the window to John Lennon's bedroom. And to the right is a two story canted bay with 10 light windows. And the window on the ground floor is for the sitting room, also called the lounge or the reception room. And the window on the top floor was to the master bedroom. Now taking a look at the side of the house, in the center of the top floor is a canted six light Oriel window. And that allows light to enter upon the landing of the staircase. And to the left is a two light window for the toilet. And there was a four light window to the bathroom. On the ground floor, there was a large bay window. It has plain glazing. In 1953, the window was extended beyond the house's rear wall in order to provide additional space for the kitchen. The rear of the house faces northeast, and there are French doors leading in and out of the dining room. And on the top floor of the rear side can be seen an eight light window, and that is for the back bedroom. Now, let's talk about the interior. The house is entered from the front doorway within an enclosed porch, and the porch has a black and white tile floor. Passing through the outside door and then the door to the house itself, one enters a wide hallway. As you can see, it was all done up in a simplified mock Tudor style, with applied timber strips that simulate paneling, and there was a plate shelf above. The staircase has group balusters, two different widths, and under the stairs is a cupboard and a cloakroom. And beyond all that is a morning room that's located to the rear left and the kitchen is in the back on the far left and the dining room is located to the right. Now upon entering the house to the immediate right facing the front is the lounge, also the reception room, and there is a picture rail and a glazed tile fireplace. And as you can see the fireplace is flanked by low shelves. The morning room is located to the rear left of the ground floor and that provides access into the rear kitchen and it has an original servant's call box, a dado and picture rails and a timber frame surround with a tiled insert that was installed by the National Trust. The kitchen at Mendips has a geometric patterned black and white tile floor. Now let's check out what goes on upstairs. Mendips has three bedrooms and a separate toilet and a bathroom on the top floor. The master bedroom is located on the front right of the house. That is where Mimi and George Smith slept. It contained a tiled surround and an electric fireplace. John's bedroom was really small and it was located on the front left. And there's a third bedroom in the back of the house on the right hand side and that was used by Mimi Smith's lodgers. And it contained a stepped glazed tile fireplace. The toilet and bathroom contain original white glazed tile with a black border. 
and there is a narrow black geometric pattern band within the bathroom tiling. Now, here's the good stuff that you were waiting for. Let's talk about John Lennon's life there. During July of 1946, when he was only five years of age, John Lennon moved into Mendips. Prior to this, John Lennon was living at 9 Newcastle Road in the nearby suburb of Wavertree. Even though John Lennon lived away from Mendips while he was in college and while traveling with his band to such places as Germany, Mendips was John Lennon's home until 1963. Now let's talk about John Lennon's mom. Her name was Julia. She was born in 1914. There's a lot of different stories about how John Lennon came to live with his aunt Mimi. One of them is that after complaints to Liverpool Social Services, Julia handed over the care of her son to her sister Mimi. By all accounts, Julia Lennon was awesome. She has been described as being very high-spirited, and she had a great sense of humor. She taught John Lennon a little bit about how to play the banjo and the ukulele. And she and he had a very close relationship, despite the fact that he didn't live with her and her daughters, who were John Lennon's stepsisters. Suffice to say, however, that she spent a great deal of time at Mendips visiting with John and her sister Mimi. But all that was to change because on the evening of July 15, 1958, Julia was at Mendips with Mimi while John was at her house visiting with his stepsisters. As Julia was leaving, one of John's friends, Nigel Wally, came to visit. He was told that John was not there. So he walked with Julia toward the bus stop further north along Menlove Avenue. At about 9.30, Julia crossed Menlove Avenue. And the center was lined with hedges, which oftentimes blocked the view for drivers going by. Moments later, Nigel heard a loud thud. And he turned, and he saw that Julia had been hit by a car. Nigel ran back to Mendips to get Mimi, and together they waited for the ambulance, and Mimi was crying hysterically. Unfortunately, Julia Lennon died that night. She was buried in Allerton Cemetery in Liverpool. Despite his incredible wealth and how he felt about his mother, it is quite astonishing that his mother's gravesite was, for some time, unmarked, and later a simple wooden cross was placed there. Eventually, her family marked it with a gravestone that does not in any way reflect her son's massive wealth or her priceless contribution in bringing John Lennon into this world and motivating his musical journey and being a legendary muse who inspired at least two very well-known songs that were written by her famous son. So why she doesn't have a more impressive gravesite is kind of a mystery to me. Now, prior to 1962, Mimi often rented the back bedroom out to a series of lodgers. She insisted that they always be male students, and since she had cats, she preferred that they be students of veterinary science. And the dining room at Mendips was used by them as a study room. In the front room, also referred to as the lounge or the reception room, Mimi had bookshelves installed for the placement of books in order to encourage John Lennon to read. John Lennon and Paul McCartney both mentioned that they wrote songs at Mendips, including the Beatles' first British number one hit, Please Please Me. When John married Cynthia Powell in 1962, the last of the students moved out so that John and Cynthia could sleep in the dining room of Mendips. Mimi then repurposed her former bedroom into a upstairs lounge, and she began to sleep in the rear bedroom. You know, a lot of people look at Mendips, and they imagine John Lennon walking in and out, sometimes with Paul McCartney. And many people envision John Lennon and Paul McCartney sitting at that front porch playing their guitars. But there's really a lot more to the story of the residents of Mendips. I mean, look up at that window. That was John Lennon's bedroom window. How many times can you imagine he sat in bed? or in a chair, or he just stood there, staring up at the sky, while realizing there was a whole big world out there. And where would he end up? I mean, sure, it's easy to daydream about being rich and famous, but what were the chances of that really happening? Growing up in the 1940s and 1950s in Liverpool, he was surrounded by men with an incredible work ethic, and that certainly helped. 
I mean, men back then and there, they got up, they got ready, they sat in their kitchen, they ate their breakfast, and they walked out their door to go to work, and they didn't come home until they earned their day's pay. And then they took care of their families as best they could. So John Lennon really grew up in a great city surrounded by great people. Now, looking at this window for a little bit longer, think about this. In 1955, at 14 years of age, and for many years later, John Lennon slept in that bedroom on the other side of that window after finding out that his uncle had died right there in that house. Think about how sad it must have been for John Lennon to wake up in the morning and to go downstairs and to see his aunt Mimi seated at the table all alone after having lost her husband and not knowing what on earth to say to her or what to even think about the loss for both of them. And in July of 1958, at 17 years of age, John Lennon slept in that bedroom after finding out that his mother was killed. How many times did he look out that window knowing he would never see her again? He would never see her smile. She would never be there ever again to talk to him, to spend time with him, and to be there for him. And in February of 1959, at 18 years of age, John Lennon slept in that bedroom after finding out that the great Buddy Holly had died in a plane crash. One could only wonder how many times John Lennon stared out that window prior to that date, wondering if he would ever meet the brilliant musician from Texas, who wasn't much older than him. How many times did John Lennon stand at that window, looking out, staring up at the sky, and wondering if he would accomplish as much as Buddy Holly did by the age of 22? And think about April of 1960, when John Lennon was 19 years of age. He slept in that bedroom after finding out that the great Eddie Cochran died in a car crash right there in England. And think about 1962, when John Lennon slept in that room and stared out that window, so utterly lost in despair, wondering how on earth his friend, Stuart Sutcliffe, could have died so young. One can only wonder how it may have affected John Lennon and maybe, while looking out that window, John Lennon may also have wondered if he would die young, just like so many of the people that he loved and cared about. Mendips was a house filled with a lot of despair, but also a lot of joy, a lot of happiness, a lot of great occasions, and a lot of hope. And for John Lennon, it was filled with incredible daydreams. And that is due in large part thanks to another important person who lived there. That was his aunt, Mimi Smith. Just imagine the incredible amount of time and effort and energy and love and concern that went into raising the great John Lennon. Imagine Mimi Smith's life at Mendips. She was born in 1906. She was 33 years old when she finally got married. And she was 34 years old when John Lennon was born. And for reasons unknown, she didn't have any children of her own. Mimi was a strong, independent, confident, very smart and shrewd woman who deserves to be shown in the most positive light ever. Now, jumping ahead to 1965, Mimi sold the property. Now, imagine the thoughts that went through her head as she walked out that door for the last time. Imagine how long she stood there and stared at Mendips, knowing it was that house where she last saw her husband. And it was there, in that house, where she last saw her sister. And it was there where she raised a boy who became a young man who went on to become one of the most famous and successful pop musicians in the world. It was there, at that house, at Mendips, where she brought him clothes and she fed him and she got him furniture and she gave him everything he needed to go out into the world to make his daydreams come true. She did that. Mimi Smith did that. And so Mendips wasn't just the home of John Lennon. It was also the home of his legendary aunt, who we still talk about till this day. 
In the year 2000, a film entitled In His Life, The John Lennon Story was produced, and some of the scenes were filmed at Mendips. On December 7th of 2000, the day before the 20th anniversary of John Lennon's death, 251 Menlove Avenue was adorned with an English Heritage blue plaque, carrying the text, John Lennon, 1940-1980, musician and songwriter, lived here, 1945-1963. In March of 2002, Mendips was acquired by Yoko Ono Lennon and given to the National Trust, which carried out a program of refurbishment. They restored the house and they furnished it in the late 1950s style in order to recreate the era in which John Lennon lived at the house. And today it is open to the public for pre-booked tours run by the National Trust. And so this concludes this micro lesson about 251 Menlove Avenue. If you want to support my research, please check out my website, audibleadventures.com. That website also has a page with links to all of my books. You can also download the Audible Adventures app for iPhone and Android. And in the description below is a link if you want to make a donation to support my research and productions. If you have any thoughts about the subject matter, please put them in the comments below and share what's on your mind. If you enjoyed this video, please share it, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, I wish you safe travels and all your journeys.